I'm going to show you how to make your own metal springs. You can do it yourself with a drill, a jig, and a little bit of metal wire. You can make expansion springs that stretch, or you can make compression springs that obviously compress. It would work like a shock absorber on your car. The jig is just two by fours. I made it about two feet long. This makes it easier. While you could just attach the metal rod straight to the drill, it's nice to have something to bear on so that you're not trying to hold this thing and wrestle with it. I did use a rasp to enlarge holes just a bit. I found a little notch in the metal rod. So now I'm just gonna drill. Finish going through that thing. File one end down just to smooth it out. To make an expansion spring, you want the coils as tight together as possible. Stick one end of the metal wire in the hole you drilled in the metal rod, and then you just start pulling the wire. And just go really slowly. The quicker you go, the more likely you are to just cross over the coils. You want nice, tight coils, and the slower you go, the easier it is to obtain that. Once you're finished with the coil, just clip the end. Being this small gauge wire, you don't really have to worry about the recoil. Not a bad spring, some nice tight coils in that. This thing doesn't seem springy enough. Google's told me that if you heat this, it will want to return to shape better. To make a compression spring, you need the coils spaced apart. I just use a piece of metal stock out around. Anything like this that has pretty tight corners would work. You just hold it next to the wire as you're feeding it. Create a coil too, just to start with, get a good base. Feed the wire with the metal stock right up against it, and you can get nice, evenly spaced coils. Heat treating these springs might be the ticket. So I've, I got the steel wool, and I've put springs in the center of these steel wool packets. I put them in aluminum foil. I put the springs in steel wool. I put steel wool in aluminum foil to try and trap the heat in and help it bake better. I don't know if that helps, but it seems like it would. And this is the little packet I'm going to put in my toaster oven. I'm going to put my springs in there, shut it up. This is the same toaster oven I use for mini vacuum forming. Well, it's going to do double duty. I have a setting to just straight up cook, which is what I've got. I've got it at max temperature, which is 400 degrees. If not in timer, it's just going to cook. The first set, I let it cook for an hour. After heat treating, the spring works much better. It wants to spring back, whereas before it felt like if you pulled it too hard, it would come completely out of shape. This spring feels exactly like it should. This is the compression spring. It actually works like a shock. You need a bar in it so that it will compress right. So that is how you make your own metal springs, jig, a drill, and a little bit of wire. And you can make all kinds of springs. If you want a bigger or smaller spring, that depends on your metal rod. That's going to dictate what size. The length can be any size you want.